Karim Hamazny here, and today I'm going to introduce approximation algorithms. These are algorithms that are used to find good enough solutions when it might be too computationally expensive to find the optimal solution every time. I'm going to introduce the case center problem. So imagine an online store wants to place warehouses between cities in the most optimal way to serve those cities. We're going to look at an example of a solution that finds something that's good enough to this problem. So let's dive in. Hello and thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about an introduction to approximation algorithms, followed by an example called the case center problem. So let's get started. So far in this video series here at CS Breakdown, most of the dynamic programming and greedy algorithms that we've looked at had these three properties. They were deterministic and they were always correct. And the worst case was bounded by a polynomial function related to its input size. So we've looked at algorithms that had complexities like big O to the N, big O N log N, big O N squared, and big O N cubed. But what about problems that have the complexity like big O 2 to the N, or worse, big O N factorial? These problems are extremely difficult to actually come up with a solid answer in a reasonable amount of time. So of the three properties listed above, we want to relax one of them so that we can come up with a good enough solution, not necessarily the optimal solution, in order to solve the problem in a fast enough time. So we're going to relax condition number two, the always correct. So we're going to come up with an approximation solution as opposed to the optimal solution. So approximation algorithms are typically applied to a min or max problem, otherwise known as an optimization problem. And we can prove that it's close enough to the actual min or max value. So how close do we want it to be to, let's say, a min example, which I'm going to go over right now. So let's assume that C star i is the optimal solution, the minimum value for an input i. And C i is the value returned by the approximation algorithm. When we put them into a ratio, we have C i over C star i is less than or equal to k, k being a constant value. Ideally, we'd want k to be equal to 1. However, it's unlikely with an approximation that it would be equal to 1. That would be the best case scenario. So we want it to be as close to 1 as possible. It'll never be less than 1, so it'll be as close to 1 from the positive side, so maybe 1.6, maybe 1.8, perhaps even 2. But the closer it is to 1, the more accurate our approximation algorithm is. The beauty of this system is that the CI that was, cal was calculated was determined by a polynomial time algorithm, so we found CI in relatively quick time. So now let's go over a specific example. This is called the center selection approximation algorithm. So let's say we have a map like this and all of these blue dots represent cities. Let's say an online company wants to place warehouses in a way that serves all of these cities in the most effective way. So we'll have K warehouses and the goal is we want to minimize the radius R between the warehouses and the cities so that the delivery trucks don't have to travel too far to deliver the goods. So now we want to define what it means to be the radius to a warehouse. So let's say we have these three cities and there is a city here where the warehouse is currently located. If we were to connect the cities to that warehouse, the longest line is the radius between the warehouse and the cities that it serves. So in this case, it would be this line here denoted by the arrow. So let's look back at the map of cities that we've looked at earlier. There are far too many ways to place warehouses, especially as the number of cities increases. So this map is relatively small, but what if we had a map with thousands of cities or even millions of cities? Then there would be too many ways to place warehouses to try out. So we do not know a deterministic, always correct, polynomial time algorithm to determine the warehouse placement. So the best we can do is to use an approximation algorithm. So initially we don't know what the radius r is. So we have to assume a value for the radius r. 
let's say it's equal to that. We want to let C be the set of cities C1, C2, C3, all the way to Cn. And we also want to define C prime, and initially it'll be equal to C. We'll let W be the set of the warehouses that we've placed, and initially before placing any warehouses, W is equal to zero or empty. And our target K value is five, so we have only at most the materials needed to build five warehouses. We can't build any more, so let's see if we can serve all of the cities with at most five warehouses. So I've placed the C prime values and W in the corner so we can update them as we go along, as well as a legend stating the length of R and the length of 2R. And here's the algorithm, and I'm going to go over that in just a moment. So let's say these are our cities, cities 1 to 15. So while C is not empty, we pick any city in C prime and add it to W. This will be our first warehouse placement. Then we want to delete all the cities in C prime that are within 2R, so 2 times the radius, from the city that we've picked to place our warehouse. So let's get started. So let's pick city number 3. So I can remove 3 from C prime and add it to W. So now that the 3 is picked, I want to draw a circle that is 2R in radius around it. So the cities 2 and 5 fall within this radius circle, so we can now remove them from C prime. Now I want to pick another city, so let's pick 13. So now I can remove 13 from C prime and add it to W. Now I want to draw a circle that is 2R around 13, and we can see that 15 and 14 fall within this circle. 14 just barely, but because it still crosses the circle, we include it, and we can delete those from C prime. Next, we'll pick 4. So we can now remove 4 from C prime and add it to W, and now draw our 2R radius circle around 4. Cities 1, 6, and 7 fall within this circle, so we can delete those from C prime. Next, we're going to pick city number 11. So we can now remove 11 from C prime and add it to W, and we can now draw the circle that is 2R around 11, and we can see that cities 8, 9, and 12 fall within the circle, so we can remove them from C prime. All that's left is city 10, so we pick that next to make our last warehouse placement. So we can now remove 10 from C prime and add it to W, and trivially we can draw the circle around it. However, since it is the last city, we are not selecting any more cities to delete. C prime is now empty and the algorithm is complete. The next part of the algorithm is if the number of warehouses in W is less than or equal to K, then we can output W as a valid solution. So because our k is equal to 5, and we have 5 items in W, this would be a good enough warehouse placement to output as a possible solution. But if the number of W that we've placed in our algorithm is greater than k, then no set of k warehouses exist such that all cities are within the radius to some warehouse. So we would need to increase our assumed radius size and try again. So why does this algorithm work? Suppose we know the optimal warehouse placement. Let's call it W star. And let's say this city here with the green circle around it is one of those optimally placed warehouses. And these circles outside are the cities that it serves. This line here is the radius of this city. So let's say our algorithm in its random selection of cities picked this one here with the red circle around it. If we draw the 2R radius circle around it, we would cover this, all the cities that are served by the optimal warehouse location. So all the cities that the optimal warehouse location covers are within this 2R radius circle of the warehouse picked by the algorithm. Each city that the algorithm picks to be a warehouse site is within distance R to a warehouse site in W, in w star. So the algorithm picks at most k warehouses, and the distance of any city is at most 2 radius of each warehouse. 
So the warehouse set W that the algorithm picks may not match the optimal solution W star, but it's a good enough approximation. So that concludes the center selection example, which is part of the introduction to approximation algorithms. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you for watching. Go to csbreakdown.com for more, subscribe to our videos, and like this. Bye.